In this video, we'll talk about constipation and diarrhea medications. When you have constipation, that means you have fewer than three stools per week, often accompanied by straining during defecation, lumpy or hard oh. stool, or a feeling of incomplete evacuation. While the total opposite happens when you have diarrhea, where you have an abnormal increase in stool frequency more than three times daily, and looseness of stools or fluidity. Let's think of how these two situations usually develop. Normally, when your intestines are chilled, relaxed, and all, they deliver stool to the large intestine in liquid form. Then, the colon starts pulling the water from the stool to make it firmer until the stool reaches to the rectum. The stool then will enter the rectum, causing an urge to defecate. But that's normal speaking. In case of constipation, it's either primary causes related to the intrinsic problems, like when the movement of stool in the colon is slower, causing overabsorption of liquid which leads to harder stool, or it can be due to pelvic floor dysfunction, so passing stool becomes more difficult, or secondary causes that are related to metabolic conditions like diabetes or hypothyroidism, or some medications like antacids containing aluminum or calcium, anticholinergic agents, opiates, calcium channel blockers, and iron supplements, or some conditions like pregnancy or GI disorders. But what about diarrhea? Well, it occurs when there is an alteration in the normal process of digestion and absorption, leading to excess water in the stool, due to infections, either viral, bacterial, or parasitic, or food intolerance from cow's milk, eggs, or lactose, or digestive disorder, or some medications. Knowing the difference between the two situations, what options do we have? In both cases, hydration is an important step to solve the issue. If the case did not resolve after that, we can think of pharmacological options. Knowing the problem in constipation, it would be reasonable to think of agents that work by absorbing water to add bulk to the stool, making the stool larger and softer like psyllium and methacetylase, which are considered bulk farming agents. Side effects may include bloating, flatulence, and distension. Or agents that stimulate the nerves in the colon to make the muscles in the bowel contract more, like cinna and bisacodyl or sodium bicosulfate. These are called stimulants. Side effects may include abdominal cramping and electrolyte imbalance. Other options we have are osmotics that attracts and retains water in the colon, leading to bowel distension. We have polyethylene glycol and lactulose as examples, and their side effects might be nausea and flatulence. Also, we have emollients like ducosate, which allows more water and fat to mix together with a stool, making it softer and easier to pass. Side effects may include abdominal cramps. And lastly, we have lubricants like glycerin and mineral oil that coat the bowl and the stool mass with a waterproof film leading to easier defecation. In case of diarrhea, we look for anti-motility agents like lopramate to activate the opioid receptors in the enteric nervous system to inhibit acetylcholine release and slow motility. In addition to these agents, we have diphenoxylate and atropine. Side effects may include abdominal cramps and constipation. We may also try antiscuratory agents like bismuth substrate to stimulate the absorption of fluid and electrolyte. Also, we have adsorbents like kaolin and pectin, which can work by binding to toxins and eliminate them through stools. Side effects may include constipation. It is kind of the same with traveler's diarrhea, which happens after ingestion of contaminated food or water. In most cases, it is caused by E. coli, shigella, and salmonella and sometimes by viruses and parasites. We treat it with plenty of water or rehydration solutions. We may also treat it with lopramate, bismuth substrate, and in some cases, we may use empiric antimicrobial agents if it's from bacterial origin like fluoroquinolones, macrolides, or rifaximine. And that's the end of this video. Please don't forget to check out our channel's blog for more information on this subject and you can follow us on Twitter so you can follow our updates and we can listen to your suggestion there. And don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. See you in the next video.